So you already have a Discord bot, and now you want to host it online 24-7. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And by following this video, you're going to get $100 in free hosting credit so you can get your bot up and running without spending any money. So to claim that $100, go ahead and click on the link in the top of the description or the top of the pinned comment. You should be sent to a page like this. You can then go ahead and sign up. And after signing up, you'll be sent to a page similar to this one. Now, before we actually set up our own server here, one thing I'm going to show you how to do afterwards is going to be how to automatically deploy any changes you make to your GitHub repository onto your server. That way you don't have to manually upload files, which does get kind of annoying. Now, if you're new to GitHub and you don't have a repo yet, go ahead and click on the YouTube video in the description. It'll walk you through all the basic steps, but I'm going to move forward assuming you already have a repo for your project. So going back into Linode, we can click on Create Linode right here in the middle. And then here we can choose our Linux distribution. If you have a preferred one, then go ahead and use that. But if you want to follow exactly what we're doing in the tutorial, then scroll down to Ubuntu 22.04 or whichever the top of Ubuntu version is. Then you can select your region. I'm in California, so I'm going to select the California region right here. You can select whichever region you're closest to or whichever one you prefer. And then here under Linode plan, we have a bunch of different options, but we're looking for a cheaper server so we can go under shared CPU. And here we have just $5 a month. Go ahead and select that one. Then you can scroll down and you can label your server here. So if you're going to have multiple, then you can easily set different names for them so you can easily find them. And here you want to enter in a root password. Make sure that this is going to be a strong password. I already have a random one generated here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. Whatever you enter, it's very important that you either completely remember it or that you have a copy and paste it somewhere so you can paste it in later on. We can now scroll down further and we can click on create Linode at the bottom right. Now it says we are provisioning right here, which means everything is being set up. And while we wait for this, let's go ahead and download something known as Bitvice. This is an SSH client and it allows us to connect to different servers. If you already have a preferred SSH client, you can skip the next section using the YouTube player. But if you don't already have an SSH client, you can download this for free by clicking on the link in the description. Once you have it installed and open, it will look something like this. The very first step we want to do is go into the options tab here near the far left and then under on login, we can check open terminal. This way, whenever we log in, our terminal will automatically open so we can actually use our server. Now going back into login, the host is going to be something we'll get in a few moments. The port is going to be 22. The username is going to be root and the initial method, we can change this from none to password. Now you want to check store encrypted password in profile. And then you want to go ahead and enter in the password that you created earlier into the password field. And now at this stage, let's go back to Linode. And here we see our server is running. So we can copy the IP address right here by clicking on the copy icon on the right. And then we can go back into Bitvice and paste that into our host. We can now save the profile and you can save it anywhere you want. I'm just going to keep it in the same folder as I'm recording this video. And I'm just going to simply call it profile. Now afterwards, let's go ahead and click login and you should get a pop up like this. Go ahead and click accept and save. And now we have our terminal or our console that just opened. And this is going to be where we can actually run our Linux commands to run our bot. To make things easier to read, you can use control L or command L on a Mac to go ahead and clear your console. And let's start off by installing Node.js so we can actually run our Discord bot. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Linux commands. You want to go ahead and open that and then copy the very first command here on line two. Go ahead and use control C or command C on a Mac to copy that and then go back into your terminal and right click to paste and then go ahead and run this. This is going to be installing Node.js so we can actually run our Discord bots. This is finally done. I can now use control L to clear the console again and now I can run node space dash V and it says that we're running Node.js version 16.17 so everything was installed correctly. Now I want to go ahead and link all the files in my GitHub repo to my actual server but I don't want to have to do this manually. I want to set up a process where whenever I push something to the repo, then it will automatically take those changes and deploy it to my server. That way it's always going to stay in sync and we don't have to actually upload things manually. So to do this, let's go back over to the Linux commands and let's copy the second command here on line five. This is going to be creating something known as an SSH key, which is one way to have servers securely communicate with each other. Let's go ahead and paste this in. It's going to ask us a few questions. Here you can just press enter a couple times and then now everything is done. If I do ls.ssh-a, then we're going to see authorized keys, ID RSA and ID RSA .pub. We want to go ahead and access ID RSA pub. So I can say vim space dot SSH forward slash ID underscore RSA dot pub. And now we can go ahead and copy all of this content just by clicking and highlighting everything. And our terminal will automatically copy that to the clipboard. We can now go back over to our GitHub repo and we can go over to settings and then we can go down to deploy keys on the left. And then we can click on add deploy key near the middle, right? The title can be whatever you want. I'm just going to call this Linode VPS and then I can paste in the key right here and I can click on add key. 
Now we can head over to the Code tab, and we want to click on the green Code dropdown. Make sure SSH is selected, and go ahead and copy it by clicking on the icon right here. We can now go back into our terminal, and we want to go ahead and close this screen here. To do that, you can add in a colon, and at the bottom left, we're now entering in a command. We can type in Q to go ahead and quit this terminal. Now we're back into our main console, and I can now clone this repo into our actual server. So to do that, I can say git clone, and then right click to paste in what we copied, and I can go ahead and run this. It's gonna ask me if I'm sure, I can type in yes. And now I can do ls, and we now see yt-tutorial as a folder, and that's the same exact name as our repo. So I can now navigate into that, and by the way, you can press tab to auto-complete things. And now I can do ls again, and we see index.js, package.json, and package-lock.json, which are the exact files I have in my repo right here. But we're missing a couple things. For example, if I go back into VS Code, we have node modules and .env. So I'm going to go ahead and open up .env. I'm going to copy this contents here. And don't worry, I'm going to regenerate this token afterwards. Going back into the terminal, I can say nano space .env. I can right click to paste. I can use control X to go ahead and close. It's going to ask if I want to save. I can click Y for yes. And now it's going to ask me what file to write to. I want to keep it the same, so I could just simply press enter. Now we want to go ahead and install all of our node modules. And to do that, we can simply type npm install. This will install all the different packages that were stored inside the package JSON. In this case, for this video, I have discord.js and .env. So it's going to go ahead and install those. Now if I do ls, we see node modules, and the .env is hidden, but we can actually see it with ls-a. So here we see .env. We also see node modules right here. So now our bot should be working. And to test it real quick, I can say node index.js. And here we see the bot is ready, which is exactly what the bot should say because of this code right here. So everything is working, but we want a couple more changes to make things much more streamlined and efficient because right now, if I close this console, the bot would stop working. So I'm going to use control C or command C on a Mac to stop that process. And now I can install something known as PM2. So I can say npm install dash G PM2. And we're about to use GitHub Actions to make sure that whenever we push to our GitHub repo, it will automatically deploy here. But before I do that, I want to make sure that our server is secure. And there's a number of different steps that you can take to do that, but there's one in particular that's very important. So if we go back over to Bitvice, we can click on Client Key Manager near the middle, and then we want to generate new. This is going to generate a new SSH key, and this SSH key is going to be used instead of a password so we can easily log in every time. So go ahead and click on Generate, and then click on Export, Export Public Key, and then Open SSH Format, and then click on Export. Here, I'm just gonna call this Pub, short for Public. Go ahead and save that. And now going into our folder, we see pub.pub. .pub. Go ahead and open that and copy everything inside. Going back over to our server, we can now go back to our root directory by saying cd space tilde. And now if I do ls-a, we see a .ssh folder. I can navigate into that with cd space .ssh. And now if I do ls, we see a file called authorized keys, which is what I want to edit. So I can say nano authorized keys. And now I can right click to paste this in. I can use control X to exit, type Y to confirm, and press enter to save to the same file name. Now I can go back over to Bitvice and under initial method, we can change this from password to public key. And then under the client key dropdown, we can select profile one. If you created a different profile just now, then go ahead and select that one. But right now I just have profile one, so I'm using that. And then we can go ahead and click on log out. This will disconnect our client here. We can go ahead and close that. And now I can click on log in. And now we have our terminal right here. So one step I want to do here is to disable password authentication now that SSH keys are now working. To do that, I can say nano forward slash etc forward slash SSH forward slash SSHD. And we can go ahead and press tab and we see SSHD underscore config. After running that, we can use control W to search and we're going to search for password. Here it says password authentication is yes. I want to change this to password authentication is no. Now, if this is commented out for you, you want to go ahead and delete the hash symbol at the start. That way we are actually saying password authentication equals no. Now, if you scroll up a little bit, here we see public key authentication. We want to go ahead and uncomment that and make sure it is yes. And then now we can go ahead and save this with control X, type Y and press enter. And now we can say system CTL restart SSHD. This is going to restart the SSHD service, which is responsible for making sure that we can actually log into our server. Now I can go ahead and close this. I can log out and now I can log in and we are now logged in. Now I'm going to demonstrate that passwords don't work, but you don't have to follow the exact steps I'm about to do. I can close this. I can log out. I can change public key to password and then I can try log in and we can no longer log in. So I can change this back to public key and I can now log in and now we're back inside as root on our server. So we're now able to log in using that public key. Now what I want to do is I want to click on Client Key Manager, and I want to export, and I now want to export the private key. I want to use Open SSH Format, 
and then click on export. I can then click on continue. Here, I want to save this as private.txt. I can then click on save. And now we can go back into the folder. Here we see private.txt. We want to go ahead and copy these contents. And then we can go over to GitHub and go over to settings. And we want to go to secrets near the bottom left and go to actions. We can now click on new repository secrets. And under name, we want to enter in host underscore SSH underscore key. You can technically name this whatever you want, but I'm naming it this just so it's very clear what we're actually working with. I can now paste this in and click on add secrets. I now want to create another one, which will be called host underscore IP. And for the value, I can go back over to Linode and I can copy this IP and then I can paste it in right here. Click on add secrets. And then one last one will be new repository secrets. Here we can have host username. And if you created a different username on your Linux server, you want to use that here. But in our case, for following this exact tutorial, we're still using root. So we can insert that right here. Then we can click on add secrets. Now we want to go over to the actions tab and this will be enabling GitHub actions to set up auto deployments. You should see node.js near the top. If not, you can search for it here by typing in node.js. And here we see node.js right here. We can click on configure. Now here we see the default configuration and don't worry, you don't have to understand what all this stuff means, but let's head over to the Linux commands tab. And here we see GitHub Actions script from line eight and all the way down to line 50. You wanna go ahead and copy that. And then going back over to GitHub, we can use control A, control V to paste. Now, if you use different names for your private keys that we just created, you want to use different names right here. But I used host underscore SSH underscore key, host underscore IP and host underscore username. So I'm using these exact strings right here. But of course you want to change that if you have something else. Also, you want to make sure that this path right here is going to be the exact path where your bot is hosted. So for example, if I go back over to our server, I do LS. Here we see the folder name is called yt tutorial. If I navigate into there with CD, I can now run the PWD command to show me the exact folder path. And here we see forward slash root forward slash yt tutorial. So I can either rename this folder or what I'm going to do is actually change forward slash bot to yt tutorial. So that way it knows exactly where to push the information to. Now I can click on start commit. And under the commit name here, I'm just going to say set up GitHub actions. And then I'm going to click on commit new file. Now I can head over to actions. I can go over to node.js CI. And here we see set up GitHub actions is currently running. So if I click on this and then I click on this job on the left that says build 1.18.x, I can now see that it's starting up the job, which is going to actually take all the code that we're currently working with. And it's going to build it all and then ship it over to our server. So now everything is complete. I can go back over to our server and I can do PM2 space list. And here we see index, which is the name of the process. But more importantly, here we see an ID, which is ID zero. In order to view the logs for this, I can say PM2 space logs space zero, zero being the ID. I can now run this. And now here we see the bot is ready. I can use control C to cancel this. I can say PM2 stop with the ID to stop the server. And now it says the status is stopped. I can say PM2 start with the ID to start it up again. And I can also restart it with PM2 restart and then the ID. Now this question mark right here, I'm not sure why there's a question mark, but this is how many times the server has actually restarted. So we notice it was zero and then I ran the restart command and now it's one. So let's go back into the logs by saying PM2 logs zero. And here we see it's restarted a couple times. Let's make sure that this is actually going to be updating whenever we push something to our GitHub repo. So now I'm gonna go back into VS code and I'm going to make a change to this where instead of saying the bot is ready, I'm going to say, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, you can make whatever change you want, save the file, and now within your console, you can say get status. Here we see index.js was changed, so git add star. Obviously now the index file is ready. I can now say git commit dash m, testing GitHub actions. And now I can say git push. I can enter in a passphrase. Obviously, if you don't have one, that won't be prompted to you. And now we can go back over to our repo, go to actions. And here we see testing GitHub actions is now running. So if I click on this, I can go ahead and click in. I can go ahead and click onto the job here. And now we're seeing the exact flow it's going to go through to make sure that the entire project is built and is ready. And it's now going to be deployed over to our server. So if I head over to the server right here, we see the bot is ready a few times, but then once this actually finishes, we see be sure to like and subscribe right here. So the update was automatic as soon as I pushed to the master branch on GitHub. And if you want to learn more about Linux security to make sure everything is as secure as possible, go ahead and click on the video you see here.